What's up, JR200? All right, spring 2024, and today is Sunday, January 14th, okay? And tomorrow, uh, we have the day off from school and work. And at one point during the day, we all need to pause and think about why we have this day off, and it's to celebrate the, uh, the amazing work and life of um, Martin Luther King. Awesome. Alrighty, so some of you guys are new to this class, okay? Uh, and yes, some of you guys are veterans. You've been in it for a week. <laughs> um, uh, for those that are new, um, uh, we send out these videos. Uh, I, I do want to familiarize you with the best thing you can do to catch up is just start at the very beginning down here. There was our greeting, fight on, all right? And, and then you just work your way up this way and try and figure out what's going on. Here, right here is my how-to video, how to get an A in JRO 200, okay? So you, you just watch that video, you're gonna, and, and you'll do great. And um, and this is the play-by-play -play that uh, my co-instructor Julia sent out to you, so you can just calendar all this in, in terms of what to expect to do. And um, um, like, like I said, we're c celebrating this weekend uh, the life of Martin Luther King, and this announcement, this this um, this lecture is going to go right here as your most recent announcement. Okay, alrighty. So if you have any questions after that, contact us, email us directly. We we like to work via email, but you can also contact me via uh, a text message on nine four nine two nine two five one nine eight and five one nine nine. This Julius. Okay. Don't let things get out of hand. If you have a problem, you contact us immediately. Immediately, okay. We can't help you when you con when you contact us like we last week at classes and tell us about all these problems that kept you from kept you from getting the work done. All right. Um, so uh, basically, what you do every week, go ahead and download the syllabus if you're new to the class. Okay, it's, it's all there. Um, Every week, you're going to go into this weekly assignment, okay? So we're going to click right there, and it's going to take us into the weekly assignment. This explains how it is structured right here, uh, readings, videos, everything that is completely free to you. There's no book in this class. And um, and every week is laid out exactly the same, okay? So this was last week's right here. I'm going to click on it right here. And what you see in here is a couple things. Uh, first of all, this was my lecture for um, uh, last week right here, part one of why aging matters. And then I, I, for just kind of a reminder, I put in the how to get an A and how to navigate the course um, video right there. It's all, we have a YouTube channel, so you'll be able to sift through all these um, at any point in time, okay? Then um, every week's gonna have some readings. Uh, what I really want you guys to do, if you haven't done it yet, is watch this video by The Economist, okay? A lot of you are Marshall majors, uh, which makes you also very interested in uh, local economy, um, uh, uh, um, state economies, federal economies, and global economies. And so this really, really puts everything into um, a very complete framework uh, in terms of what we're doing in this class. So do check this out. Well, what I did in my videos, I went over this these first parts of the class where we just kind of laid out the reality of people are living longer, okay? Um, and uh, and while we are reproducing, okay, um, we're not re reproducing at as rapid a tick, a rapid a rate as we used to before. And as a result, the burden in many arenas that we're gonna go over in this class uh, in terms of caring for the ever-growing older population because we do live longer is falling on fewer and fewer shoulders um, and that would be you guys okay so there's um, uh, fewer Gen Zers that are going to be paying into for example um, our federal and state taxes that in turn the money goes out a percentage of that we're going to go over today to to pay for the special needs of people as they get older okay um, fewer and fewer people your age that are going to be around to help with the hands-on caregiving of your family members, okay? Um, that used to be easier when the, you know, people had larger families. People don't have large families anymore, okay? So we're going to go over all this stuff, for, um, these components um, all throughout the class. I just kind of went through it, boom, 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 um, the first uh, lecture, which was last week's, okay? We talk a lot, a lot about non-communicable disease. And this is a big issue um, in terms of uh, Medicare. 
and expenditures. And, and by far, people over the age of 65, they are the lion's share of costs in terms of insurance paying for medical procedures. You know, I would even go out and say 90% of all the procedures, expenses, drugs, hospitalizations, doctor visits are really at age uh, 65 and older. And so as a result, uh, this is a big financial burden. Okay. All righty. Uh, so what we're going to be then going over uh, today is we'll be going over uh, some other consequences of having a lot of older people around relative to the number of younger people that support them, okay? Um, and, uh, you know, I, I was just talking about caregiving and, and, you know, the change in family structures, you know, and and um, and so there's more and more expect, expected burden, more expectations of you when you uh, when your parents and grandparents get older, okay? Um, we're going to be talking about running out of money out of our entitlement programs, and so the expectation of not only us, but worldwide, is they're trying to get people to work longer because um, the pensions, uh, it's not like the, the money goes in there and it sits there. No, the money goes in there and it pays for the people that are retired right now. And uh, so the balance is shifted. And so, so um, uh, governments are going broke because of this. And, uh, and so we have to have um, a change in these social insurance programs. Uh, and there was rioting in the streets of France because they were pushing back the age of the guaranteed pension system, which is their equivalent system to our Social Security system. And uh, people don't want to work, you know. Well, you know, it's not working out or is the government's going to go broke. All right. So that's what all this was all about. And again, this is all last week's this is my puppies, Desi and Lucy. Now, I do want to go back here. There's a, a couple of different ways you can go back and just go back here. Um, I can also go back here. So I'll click up here on that one. It takes me to the weekly assignments, okay? And, um, oh, yeah, that's right. Let me go back here to the first week again. Sorry. I was, I was showing you the assignment, but every week is the same drill. You get through all the um, information that you're going to learn. Then you take a reading quiz, okay? Um, you can open two windows so you can look at the quiz questions and then go through the information and take the quiz. Pretty straightforward questions. And um, uh, you can work with your friends on this, but the bottom line is a, uh, there's five questions drawn from a pool of about 25 to 30 questions. So you no two of you are gonna get the same exact five questions, okay? But you can still help each other out and that's all good, all right? Uh, some of these same questions will end up on the, uh, the midterm. And then for the second half class, uh, the the second midterm. So we see over here, we have two uh, midterm exams and we, we basically draw from the same pools of questions, right? Awesome. The other thing you have to do is you have to make a discussion post, okay? Awesome, very, very cool, all right? And so we can go right in here and you can see um, how many people have been posting, which is beautiful, look at all that, you know? And then what you do to get full credit is you do your primary post to the prompt and then you comment on three of your classmates, and then you get full credit, okay? Um, that's pretty much well spelled out really nicely as well, okay? And so, you know, we can we can choose anybody. We can look at, for, for example, uh, Jasmine, okay? And so, <laughs> awesome. So she posted a beautiful pic. God, your dog is beautiful, Jasmine, okay? Um, gave, a little, gave us some feedback. So, so this first uh, week is just introducing yourself, okay? So, uh, studying health and human sciences, a minor in healthcare studies. So what we're doing in this class, Jasmine, is so important in terms of your career aspirations, okay? And then you can see um, um, Ellie Ricardo um, commented on her as well, okay? So Ellie and Ricardo still have two more to go on other classmates to get full credit, all right? So that's how that plays out. Great, great seeing your post there, Jasmine. I love it. That picture's gorgeous, man. Okay, awesome. So that's how you do that, okay? So that's straightforward. The so last time um, I went, I accessed um, uh, the, um, we can go backwards here and get out of the discussion. And then backwards again, okay? I'm not, and if you don't know how to do a discussion, go to the how to folders right here. And it explains how to post in a discussion board, okay? Um, 
And then we can go back to weekly assignments here or weekly assignments there. Okay, so that was just what we did last week. And then this week, we're, we're going to have a little bit more substance in terms of the discussion board. So the discussion board gets down here and it's looking at um, one of the most rapidly aging countries in the world. It is the most rapidly aging country in the world, and that's Japan. So they, they are, you know, you know, a colloquial term is a canary in the coal mine. So they're going through a lot of these growing pains way ahead of all other countries in the world. And so as a result, we look to see what's going on there. What did they do right? What did they do wrong? And how can we improve then, you know, learn from their experiences to make for a better society here in the United States? Um, or you could be saying the same thing, let's say, if you were from Argentina, um, you were from Venezuela, whatever it is. Okay? Awesome. So that's, um, that's what this discussion post is all about. And let's see what's going on here. All right. And we can go in here. And you can see a number of, of students have already started to get in there. All right. Um, we can look at um, Kate Lee. Okay. And so there she, she, she actually visited Japan, which is awesome, okay? So um, she comes through and, and has a great response to the prompt that is in there, okay? And then we see um, uh, the two posts right here on Kate and, and responding to what she had to say. So it's a really good way to get to know each other and get to know um, um, yeah, everybody's perspective in class, okay? So you know what was the prompt in this discussion, okay? Um, so we would say that we you there's instructions and in how to go through the information right here and interpret it right here. That's what this is all about right here. Okay, um, you watch the videos. Okay, and then um, we there's a, a PDF file of this Business Insider article about how it's impacting um, the people that are your age, uh, young people in in Japan, and. Um, then we want you to think about the world economy, how changes in aging fertility are going to change your world, and what is your take on all that. All right, so pretty, you know, it, it's it's uh, not real specific, but I, I look forward to seeing all your guys' um, vision in terms of what's going on, okay? All righty, so we're going over here now. We're going to look at changing family structure. Um, so this is trend six to end note. That's what you're asked to do, okay? And we can see this up here. That's exactly what we say right here, trend six to end note, okay? So what you do is you, you'll download the PDF file and we'll get there in a second, okay? Um, some highlights from, uh, from, from this uh, uh, section of this introductory article. Um, we're looking at um, really some big ones right here, okay? Uh, pattern changing chat patterns of work and retirement. The social, social insurance, the entitlement programs, whether it's um, government pensions or in, in our case, we call it uh, social security. There's separate from social security. We also have the government pensions that our members of Congress, the members of the Senate get. They get lifelong pensions. <laughs> they don't even have to serve that long. Lifelong health insurance. OK, that's a whole different issue. OK, and then we have. Um, the same thing, uh, uh, police officers, firefighters, people that work for local governments like the city of New Laguna de Gal. Um, we can look at, for example, the water company. These are all government jobs until they have a guaranteed government pension that's separate from the social security system, right? All righty. So we're looking at here. Um, uh, and again, these are, you know, this, this is a, a 2017 article, but they're looking backwards in time at data. And we're going to be updating this, sadly, not for you guys, but for next next uh, semester. Okay, but it's the same drill; it has not changed much. Okay, and we see certain countries, Italy, Poland, Germany, France, have a huge burden here. This is the um, the pension expenditures in the European Union as a percentage of the financial well-being of the country. So, if we look at all the money that is positive, the money that is being made in that country, private sector and public sector. That's called your gross domestic product. And we see that 15% of that, um, uh, um, of the money that comes in, um, that is beautiful, shows your growth in the, in the economy, is going out negatively to pay for the pensions, okay? And so um, certain countries, you know, um, saw this coming and changed everything. So the Ireland, you're on your own, baby. Okay, you're not going to get a big pension. Okay, 
on average, uh, this is where um, how Europe stacked up right there. So then we can go look down here at a, a slightly more recent port, uh, report, uh, and this is by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. And these these are big, giant. You, know, you always you know you see you hear about um, big come togethers, okay, big meetings by. Uh, representatives from from uh, people around the globe, and this is one of these kind of um, of uh, organizations. And um, what um, this group did, uh, is, is what we're seeing here in the data from this group. We're looking at the public expenditures on pensions as a percentage of the financial well-being or the gross domestic product of each of these countries. Okay, and um, we see right here if we combine. This is if we combine our public pension system for our government workers with our um, social security system. This is how we stack up to other countries. So you can see Greece, man, Greece is so burdened by paying out pensions, guaranteeing pensions. And so there's a lot of restructuring that is, that is happening in these countries. And oftentimes, as we saw in France, that was right up there, um, there's a lot of... Um, uh, political upheaval, people rioting in the streets because France changed the, um, you know, we're moving towards 70. We're, we're at, about, at almost 68 years of age uh, for our guaranteed um, uh, pension system. You can first tap into it at 62. There, the guaranteed pension system was 62. They moved it to 63 and people lost it. Okay. We're going to talk later on how uh, the maximum pension you can, maximum social security you can get in, in our country, um, t tops out at age 70. And it's all based on an algorithm on how much money you've made your whole life. So um, obviously, if you're like me and you've made a lot of money, then I'm going to get a greater social security than somebody that, say, worked at McDonald's or something like that. Okay, awesome. So we, we're on the lower end here. So this 7%, um, that here's an, another look at this right here. Sorry. And we look at the growth of um, our combined government pensions and Social Security, okay, over time. This is 2020. So you, we see here, um, right here at 7% um, of our gross domestic product, okay? So you see that it's kind of gone exponential, okay? And that's because people um, are living, lo living longer, real realistically, okay? So, um, so, yeah, so that's what we see right there. Um, we scroll down here and we look, if we look just at Social Security, okay, in our country, that's the light blue right there. So we can see public and private, okay. And this is a description of how we stack up in terms of pension systems compared to other countries. If we now consider um, private pensions as well, okay. Um, and uh, these are big companies, all right, the blue chip companies that we hear about in the stock markets. So Ford and GM, my friend worked for uh, United Parcel Service or UPS, Bank of America. They have um, guaranteed pensions, okay? Real interesting, smaller, they'd say the pension you might get, you know, um, uh, as a police officer, it's just, but it is a little giddy up. Uh, Julia worked for the Automobile Club and they had a pension. But it's a combination. So there's that guaranteed pension as long as the company is solvent. Okay, um, that's a that's a private pension. Then there's Julia gets Social Security as well. Okay, and um, and uh, so that's a, a, you know, a combination. Okay, and then later on we'll talk about you know our own private investing. But this is how it all stacks up right here. So you look at France and Italy. You see that we're predominantly okay. Um, uh, um, uh, if you look at pensions, a private pension country, okay, you see that Iceland, they said, you know what, um, it's up to the companies, okay, right here. Now, um, like I said, Social Security um, is a small percentage right here. So this is Social Security. And, and then what we're supposed to do, we're going to learn later on, is we, what we really need to do is not even look at this, but we should be taking parts of our paycheck and investing it, okay? And that's where we're going to talk about 401ks and IRAs, okay? So why is this such a big deal, okay? Um, when we look at all this, here, the the, um, the percentage of money going out to pay for people's financial well-being when they get older, um, these entitlement programs, pensions, and Social Security, um, the reality is, uh, like I said, 
it's not money that's sitting there waiting for you. Okay, the money uh, that I put in to Social Security right now, that I put in to Medicare right now, it goes out immediately to people that are receiving it. Okay, so then now when I retire, okay, when you retire, on and on and on, there's fewer and fewer and fewer people paying in to this Social Security program. Okay, if I still want to get um, the same amount of Social Security. In fact, if I want to have a cost of living bump, all right, and have my Social Security go up, then we're going to have to tax you more in order for me to have that, okay, because we have fewer and fewer people paying into this, okay? And that is the dilemma, all right? Awesome. Okay. We'll get into this a little bit here. I'm looking at Japan in a second. And so what you do here is you just download this puppy, okay? And we look at it right here. Um, remember, if I what am I supposed to do? Uh, it says right here, um, I'm supposed to go to Trend Six. All right, so I'm going to go to Trend Six. Hey, I've downloaded this a few times. Okay, so I got to go find Trend Six. So I can go like this. All right, I can grab my bar and go. Go all the way through all the stuff that we talked about here in the opening lecture, and we're going to go into Trend Six. Okay. Alrighty, and we looked at all you know the issues that I was just bringing up. Russia's in a world of hurt, okay, just by the, by looking at that, okay. You got a lot of old people. If you're young, you're getting the hell out of Russia, okay. Alrighty, cool. All right, so big changes, okay. So we see here. Sorry, I'm gonna adjust my seat here. People live longer and they have fewer children. All right, boom. That transforms family structure. Um, that means um, when I need help, okay. Back in the day, there used to be a big, giant family tree. A lot of people I knew I could depend on to help me around the house, mow the lawn, go out and get groceries. I need to go to the doctor. So, you know, the um, caregiving was distributed, uh, you know, along a lot of different lines. There's always a primary caregiver, but you you knew that you had some, some assistance, okay? And so what What's going on now more is we're starting to rely more and more on friends because our nuclear families have compressed and gotten smaller, okay? So this is, this is a big deal, okay? Um, the other thing that's happening is um, um, you guys are delaying uh, launching. Part of it is economics. It's hard to, hard to afford to live. So you're living at home longer, okay? Which means you're then going to go into your careers a little bit later in life. And you're uh, in all likelihood not going to have many children, okay? Maybe one, maybe two children, maybe no children, okay? Last people around to help, okay? All right? If you do have kids, okay, suddenly you have these dependents, okay? You've waited. You've got your career together. You're in your 40s now. Your parents are really old. Your kids are really young. And you're just sandwiched in terms of time, in terms of getting things done, okay? And that's the reality of all this, okay? Um so we're seeing here, okay, um, um, it says right here, okay, um, people don't die as often, mortality rates are, are, are improving, okay, and so uh, you're uh, more likely to have surviving aunties, okay, parents, uncles that are much older that are going to be looking to you for some help, okay, um, you know, for my kids, you know, so I have an older brother who's uh, in his 70s and he has no children, and uh, when he needs help, he comes to us. And if um, if I can't help, then it's going to be on you know on my kids. Okay, um, people live longer. Okay, you're more likely to see great grandparents, etc. Um, things like that. Okay, alrighty. Um, it's a change of of the way people live their lives. You guys don't get married. People don't get married. Okay, they have really, really branched out families with really complicated patterns of care and caregiving, okay? And so that's what that's all about right there, okay? Tradi traditional living patterns, okay? We can look to Japan. That's what this is, and we saw a real great you know, analysis in the people that already did the, the discussion, okay? So, sorry, let me get this over here. There we go. So, um, we look at Japan, okay, the traditional living arrangements are becoming less common. What does that mean? So we look at people in Japan over the age of 65 right here, okay, the traditional pattern, okay, would be that um, 
you're uh, married with a child, okay, all right, and uh, that's how you're living, or you have a spouse only, okay, um, living alone and living now, you know, and this is really, really against the the the, the way Japanese culture is laid out. Um, again, this is 2017 publication looking backwards, but you see um, less and less of the nuclear family uh, and more and more people living alone, more and more people living in institutions, okay? And we're seeing this over, repeating itself over and over and over again, okay? Now you have to care for yourself, okay? There's left people to support you, okay? So um, we're gonna see shifting patterns of work and retirement. It's such a bummer for you guys, okay? You know, believe me, you know, I'm gonna be 68 and there are times I'm like, God, I really don't feel like working. Am I as competitive um, as my younger workmates? No way, no way. I don't have the strength, I don't have the energy, it is what it is, okay? So um, so we're having to rethink this, and that's, that's, this is a big, big global issue, okay? Um, and um, and the, what, the other thing that's happening, since we're having less fertility, less, you know, I, I only had two kids. My two kids are 22 and 28, and there are no grandchildren, zero, okay? And I don't even know if there's gonna be any, okay? So that's a shift in the potential workforce okay and uh less people aren't having kids and so as people get older and pension out of the workforce there's nobody coming in to not only pay the social security taxes but nobody coming in to keep the wheels moving on corporate productivity okay and so as a result the solution has been okay all right let's have let immigration come in okay it's a hot ticket item politically, but you know what? Do you guys like strawberries in the morning? I love strawberries, okay? I love to have them for my lunch, okay? I love having fresh onions at dinner, okay? Um, we didn't have, we don't have the population from our natural reproduction in the United States to have people out there picking strawberries and picking onions, all right? So we had to have immigration to make that happen, all righty? Um, and what about, you know, I like going out to eat, okay? Waiters, okay? Dishwashers, on and on and on. So we've had immigration. And now, all right, that's the all blue collary, okay? Now at the level of the white collar worker is co companies, many corp corporations are not finding the, um, the skilled, um, edu you know, college educated um, uh, potential employees to meet their needs. And so, Special immigrants are coming in, skilled, for example, in coding, AI, et cetera, that will allow that company to, to move forward, right? So this, this is what this is all about here, okay? So you have to think about, you know, these things, okay? Um, you know, we see this expectancy, you know, life expectancy increase, okay? Um, and so we're going to see, a, for you guys, sadly, a decline in years that you're going to be able to be retired. You're going to have to keep working, okay? Um, even more so for those people that are poor, you know? It's, it's, you know, it's a double-edged sword for them, you know? They have to work harder, um, and they have to work longer, okay? And, you know, luckily for you, hopefully you'll have uh, this... Uh, financial planning side to you where you're going to have retirement income coming say from real estate investments retirement income coming from uh, investing in companies through the stock market your portfolio okay even something like art okay um, but that's that is a, um, a, a pathway of privilege okay alrighty so um, so there's a, all these issues that have to, have to be, uh, be considered um, in terms of the future and what you're going to have to deal with. And we're seeing here, looking backwards, we see that both mammon, mammon, women, and men are spending, we're seeing this is looking um, ages 55 to 64, the percentages that are now in the workforce. And you see that percentages are going up and up and up. And if we were to look at an update, you see it continues to rise. And this is just um, not because we're bored, it's because it's the economic reality, all right? Um, and then the globally, the countries are going to get sucker punched right here. You see these countries right here, okay? Um, we're looking at, sorry, I'm going to get myself, there we go. So 
these are uh, people receiving a public pension, okay? This is men, 55 to 65 years of age, not work, working. What percentage, okay? And we can look here, in these countries, um, it's you know between uh, 55 and 70 percent of the population in that age group is not working. You know, compared to down here, where we're more in the 35 percent range. Okay, it's actually um, um, dropping. More and more people have to work. Okay, and so these guys are reliant on their pension system that's not solvent. So it's a big, big, big issue coming. You know, moving forward for them. All right. So as a result, they're not solvent. Okay. We have we have uh, you know, so many issues. Hopefully, Congress will actually be able to get down and not be political about you know red versus white and elections. And everything seems to rotate around elections, and then nothing about hey, we got to fix this problem. Okay, this is a big problem. Okay, so we got to fix our social security system. Okay, um, we need to. We'll talk when we get into the economic part of this class. Um, people that make you know. <laughs> um, Social Security taxes for Jeff, Jeff Bezos tops out at, can, Julie, what, what is the top income for Social Security? It's about, it's about uh, one, at $160,000, you don't pay any more Social Security tax. It's crazy. You know, this guy's making billions a year, okay? This is where the, the fix has to change, you know, the, where we have a fix and where there has to be change, okay? Um, people that are making a lot more money should be paying more into the Social Security system because they like to go out to eat. They like their strawberries in the morning, okay? So let's keep the, the machine going, okay? All righty. There's a discussion um, later, later on in there here about what they, what they did in China. They, they, make, they made things different, okay? Uh, this is the same thing we've been talking about right, right here. Again, percentage um, um, of the gross domestic product that is that is reflects in the pension. Italy, Italy's got problems. Greece, Greece has got problems. Okay, awesome. So the, with the uh, the China experiment, China had it going on, and all of a sudden there were too many people. You know, people were getting pensions, and they said that's it. And so now, um, when we look at the average wage of somebody in China, uh, the, their new Defined benefit pension system, which is their social security system, okay, um, will only cover a 20% replacement of their income, okay? The rest of it, you're on your own in terms of doing some good financial planning and investing your own money, okay? Why is that, okay? Same thing I've been talking about here. All right, so this is China's declining ratio of covered workers to pensioners, okay? So this is the millions of people, you know, tapping into uh, the pension system, okay? This is a 2005, it continues to grow, okay? And then, like I said before, um, the number of workers, okay? We'll go back to my original discussion over here. There it is, all right? So the number of workers paying in to, that would be our social security system, and we see here um, the ratio coming down here, the number of workers paying for all this pension is going down and down and down and down in China. So you, you just can't keep going the same way. It has, you have to have a fix. So these are some big, giant economic challenges that are, that are, gone, that go, that are uh, referred to in, 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 that, in this chapter. And so the fix, the solution is mutual fund stocks. It's up to you. Okay. So. I would take percentage of my income, especially right now, guys, if you're working, okay, you're working, you're living with your parents, um, take that money and invest. We're going to go over these things, but it's called a Roth individual retirement account. So um, you have a limit, uh, $6,500 a year. You put it in there and you look the other way until it's retirement time. You can tap into those monies if you hit an emergency without fees at about, about I think it's about age 55, okay? Um, and even if you had to tap in it earlier, it's worth it putting in there, assuming you won't, okay? And we see down here, look at Greece and Spain, okay? The percentage of households that have taken the bull by the horns and are doing their own investing with their own money is next to nothing because they're like, why should I? The government is going to make me happy, okay? Well, that's not a reality anymore globally, okay? And we see over here um, in Sweden and Denmark, Far fewer, far many, far more people are investing, okay? And we're doing the same um, in terms of our country. A lot more people, all right? All right. So when we look at the, this is you're looking at Thailand. This is a global economy article. Um, 
we we look at um, the amount of income that is generated towards the gross domestic product, product the financial well-being as a function of age down here, and you're not much of a contributor to uh, the finances of the com com company country till you're about you see here about age 15, and then it starts kicking in. Okay, and this is the uh, annual per capita labor income. Okay, so you know this is an average. Okay. So annually, um, the labor income of people in in Thai Thailand, you know, gets up here when you start. This is your wheelhouse of working age. You're going to be making the most. You're going to be making in your early 40s, okay? And this is the amount of consumption, okay? Outgoing expenses, okay? And uh, you see, when you're young, you don't have a whole lot of outgoing expenses, okay? Then you hit the steady state right here. But then you start having this decline in income until you're completely out here, okay, dependent on the government, but you still have lots and lots of needs, and that's what that's all about. All righty, so this goes over, you know, things that we should be doing, um, changes we need to be made, kind of look at that, my friends. And then you come down here, and like I said, you just address um, the, you know, the, the real issue right here in terms of, What's going on in Japan? What's going to, what do you see happening globally? And what do you see um, as a future direction for us in the United States? All right, guys. All right. Peace. Uh, enjoy your, your Monday off and think about why we're doing that Monday off. And um, what else I want to say here? Um, I think I'm just going to get out here. And... Alrighty, and I'm gonna there. I was looking for my uh, my recording system. I'm gonna hit stop now, guys. All right, take care.